Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by today. Uh, if you found this video, chances are you are uh, researching on how to deworm a caiman lizard or other similar lizard. Uh, I know there's a, a similar treatment regimen used on bearded dragons, um, which is really where a majority of this information comes from. So, uh, good news, you're in the right place. Uh, I'm going to go over how I uh, regularly, first, well first initially and then regularly treat my, my pet caiman lizard here for internal parasites. Now I want to start out with a with a disclaimer here. I am not a veterinarian or any type of reptile expert. Uh, I'm simply showing you the method that I use on my pets for their initial quarantine and then a regular maintenance when feeding live. Uh, I recommend anybody and everybody uh, defer to a, a proper herb veterinarian uh, on any questions or concerns you may have with your lizard. Uh, the only uh, I only do this to, to, to show you kind of the steps that I take to make sure my, my animal are healthy. Um, I'm not making any recommendations. This is just showing you how I handle it. Especially with, with caiman lizards, uh, most caiman lizards uh, are farm bred in South America, which is pretty much wild caught. Uh, they're very prone to internal parasites due to uh, the conditions that they're kept in and then the food that they're eating. Uh, you know, they're eating live snails as the staple of their diet, which themselves often contain parasites. Um, if, if you, like me, uh, breed to live snails to feed to your caiman lizard, uh, you're taking the risk of transmitting parasites, and it's a, it's a good idea to put a prevention routine. What we're actually going to use today to deworm uh, Leela here is a uh, common dewormer in the, the, the pet trade that is for dogs and cats and, and even livestock and farm animals is commonly used uh, and that is the active ingredient fenbendazole which is a uh, broad spectrum uh, dewormer here that goes after hookworms, tapeworms, roundworms, um, a, lot of, a lot of worms that are, are commonly found in the digestive tract. There's a few different brands. The brand I'm using today is Safeguard. Uh, you got the Safeguard 4 here, K9 Dewormer. Um, it also goes under another name, Panicure, uh, is the other common name for Fenbendazole. Uh, and it does come in multiple, multiple varieties. So you have the powdered form, and you also have the uh, gel form. And I'm sure there's an injectable too, but I'm not I'm not injecting my animals without veterinary advice uh, right off the bat. I'm not new to this medication. Uh, I have used it in the past uh, several times. I actually used this on my dwarf neocaridinia and caridinia shrimp tanks. Uh, it is commonly used in the aquarium hobby to kill roundworms or planaria. Uh, it also used to kill hydra, which are uh, little tiny uh, organisms and, and parasites that uh, a lot of times with the planaria and the the hydra they'll sting the baby shrimp uh, and kill the baby shrimp where the adult shrimp aren't so much affected but it does stop the the reproductive rate of your shrimp uh, so I use this dissolve it in the water uh, after a couple days do a water change treat again uh, twice to kill off all the, the babies and the, the eggs and then uh, gravel back real good and you're good to go. So my current plan as far as treatment goes uh, is treat once every three to six months. Uh, that is after I treat her for the initial quarantine. So I've already given Leela a round of dewormer. Uh, I did go on the lighter side to start. This will be the second round to wipe everything out. Then we go for a vet visit, verify there's no parasites in her stool, and uh, continued treatment, just making sure that you know I get she gets dewormed regularly. Uh, this doesn't hurt anything. There's no long-term effects. The half-life for this, in uh, once dissolved in water, is about 24 hours, 
and it does it is light sensitive so uh, you know it work, obviously it'll work good in the lizard's stomach uh, once they excrete it it becomes totally ineffective uh, in the water after 24 hours so it's it dissipates all right so where do we start uh, the first thing is we need to figure out how big of a dosage to do to get so to do that we're going to need to weigh our lizard so i do have a standard kitchen scale here with leela and some egg crate i went ahead and zeroed it out on the egg crate so it would only capture leela's weight uh, and i did train her pretty quick here to uh, walk on to the the egg crate so i can get an accurate weight here um, i would not try to guesstimate or do this without knowing the weight of your animal. So uh, here we do see she does weigh 146 grams, which is double the size of when I got her um, a little over a month ago. So uh, good diet, very good varied diet uh, and supplements and, and things of that nature. She's really packed on some weight uh, and it's good to see because it means that nothing is bothering her digestive tract. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is take a look at the concentration. Uh, here you can see there is 222 milligrams per gram uh, of fenbendazole in this pack here. Uh, this is common, it's a, a, a common uh, strength here. Um, so this each packet contains four grams. So I need one quarter of one of these packets here. Uh, to get one gram. So we'll start off by going to this cool web website. I'll leave a uh, link in the description for this here. Um, this is the reptile drug, drug dosage calculator. Basically what you do is you go through and you select the medication that you want, uh, the drug concentration. So we have the 22.2 milligrams per gram or 22.2%. Uh, and then the weight of our animal, which is 146 grams here and calculate. Now I know for a fact that the, uh, the, the recommended dosage is 50 to 100 milligrams per kilogram of animal. So uh, you take that down and that's what this calculator is doing is it's taking that those recommended dosages. It gives you a high and a low. So here we see we need 7.3 milligrams of fenbendazole to treat our 146 gram lizard. And that's uh, not a lot. So we're gonna do something to, to, to spice that up here to, to get a easier easier method to work with. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to lay out one gram of medication on the scale. Um, it's easier to start with at the one gram mark. That way you know everything is, is, is a whole number and it you really can't save the packet once reopened because it does expose it to air. It will dissipate the and, and, and affect the concentration of the chemical. So it's a one-time use deal. I weigh out one gram. I go ahead and mix that in with two milliliters of water here. Um, that's important. So normally I would use one milliliter and I would use 0.36 of a uh, 0.36 milliliter of a syringe of medication. Um, but I want to get a, a more accurate reading. So I'm gonna up the size of the, the amount of water that we're using here from one milliliter to two milliliters. That way I have, I can multiply everything by two with still that same one gram of safeguard. So it'll be uh, 0.73 milligrams uh, it'll take to get there. We need uh, 0.6, uh, 658 mils of medication to get 7.3 milligrams of fenbendazole. So uh, two milliliters of water that were added directly to the safeguard. And then I mix this up extremely well, just to make sure that all the all the corners are, 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 are scraped. There's no powder in here. You know, we're, we're working to get this as dissolved as possible. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, inject it into our pinky mouse that we're gonna feed our caiman lizard. Uh, so go away, I did this, uh, you know, mixed it for about a minute here to speed this up here so it looks a lot slower than it actually is but i i did i did mix this and make sure everything is dissolved uh, and then go ahead and suck it up 
into the syringe. These are nice blunt tip syringes that I got off of Amazon. Um, I use them for a couple different things. Um, they work actually really well to start siphons if you don't want to suck on an aquarium hose. Uh, the, the, the blunter tip ones fit right in. Uh, this is great. This is a uh, 18 gauge, uh, I believe it is, uh, blunt tip syringe. It's not meant for like hypodermic injection. This is um, for oral, pretty much oral use only. Uh, so I went ahead and I have a seventh, uh, uh, set 0.7 of a milliliter, so that's uh, roughly seven cc's. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. It's always good to measure, make sure you know all the air and, and that is out, and make sure you have the appropriate amount of medication, and then uh, double check, uh, reset things. Make sure the last thing you want to do is give the wrong dosage to your animal. So uh, I ensure that I have the appropriate amount of medication in the syringe and we are good to go. So I'm gonna take the syringe then, uh, get everything off, and I'm going to uh, take that, and it's, it's, it's really not a lot. One milliliter syringe is the easiest way to get the, uh, the, the CCs out. Uh, so what we're gonna do next is go ahead and we're going to basically gut load our pinky mouse. So I'm going to take this thawed pinky out. Um, ideally thawed, we want to make sure that we, we there's a little bit extra in here just to, to avoid any spit out. Um, a whole lot, I, I wouldn't go a whole lot extra. A, a cc or so will be fine if in the lizard, but I, I wouldn't go any more than that. Try to keep it, uh, it's always better to treat low than high in my experience. So I'm going to take this I am going to uh, take this thawed pinky out. Uh, I do like using the Pet Smart Arctic Mouse brand for this because they come in individual sealed uh, little baggies here. Um, and I don't want to squeeze this pinky too hard. I have uh, had uh, some unfortunate circumstances happen while I was uh, squeezing a, a, a pinky. So I, I keep it in the bag. Uh, we're just going to take the syringe and feed this down into the mouth of the, uh, the, the frozen thawed little pinky here. Um, and basically we're gut loading this pinky with the medication. Um, and you wanna make sure you, you stick this, this syringe down enough to get you know into the stomach of the pinky to avoid anything coming back up. Um, a little spit back is to be expected. The, ba the baby mouse's stomach is rather small. Um, so uh, you could see it shoot right into the, the stomach here. You see the white, white here, so we know that it's going in. And a little bit out, a little bit spit back. Not a whole lot lost. And we are good to go. So there is our gut-loaded deworming pinky for our caiman lizard. All right, so now that we have that all set, now it's just time to go ahead and feed Leela. Um, I did feed her uh, a couple couple pinkies earlier. I wanted to make sure I typically don't feed uh, baby pinkies to my Cayman lizard. It's pretty much snails, tilapia, uh, some market shrimp, um, ground turkey. Um, Getting her in the habit of eating different things has kind of been my goal, and she's she, the only thing she really doesn't like is the market trip. Everything else is good to go. Um, important note here: I did do my hardest to feed head first in the event that she squeezed on the stomach. All the medication would have gone down her throat. Um, that I seen her the she didn't squeeze any medication out. The uh, the the white bubble was still in the pinky stomach here, so she chewed it up real good, and. Boom, the deworming process has begun. Um, so the goal is here is after, you know, a uh, couple more weeks, I have, a, I have a vet visit with my local herp vet. Um, my goal is to avoid a second vet visit, right? So we want to treat the animal, uh, uh, give her, went through, give her two rounds of dewormer and then bring her to the vet. The vet will do a fecal smear to validate that there's no parasites inside. 90% of the time your, your caiman lizard is going to have parasites. Most of them are con t 
technically wild caught at this point. So uh, it is uh, it is it is more more common than not to have a, a, a caiman lizard with parasites. So the goal is is to to get that treatment going, verify with the vet that everything looks good, and you know then uh, just keep on regularly doing this. Uh, you know feeding uh, every three to six months I probably stay around the five month side of things one because I'll forget um, and two it's 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 just easier to, to do that way um, you know and, and, and Leela is happy active you know this is her second round so I don't expect any any negative side effects she was fine the first time uh, and she's put on a decent amount of weight so now that we know she's completely parasite free uh, we are good to go so everybody Thank you for watching today. Uh, I hope this helps somebody. Uh, you know, there's not much of that information out on the internet with deworming reptiles or caiman lizards specifically. Um, I again, I am not a vet. This is not medical advice. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, I shouldn't replace any kind of uh, vet visit that you do make. Uh, so, you know, uh, as you can see, Leela is is feeding response is crazier than ever. Uh, so we are in good shape here. So. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know your thoughts. If there's anything that you do differently to get, uh, you know, keep your your, your lizard parasite free, uh, please share below. And if not, have a great day.